Dislocated kneecap or dislocated patella is not that common. Uh, it can occur, of course, but it isn't very common. What you have is a situation where the quadriceps tendon, which is basically the end of your quadricep muscle, uh, forms a tendon and it attaches to your patella or your kneecap. And then from there, you have a tendon that runs from your kneecap down to your tibia, and that's called your patella tendon. We're mostly concerned about your quadriceps tendon. There's a groove inside your, inside your bone, it's called uh, the femur, and that allows the tendon to glide in and out of very well. But if there's a dislocation, that tendon actually pops out of that groove and the uh, response is an immediate pain and swelling. It's terrible. Um, what's unique about this injury is that once you've had it, it is imperative that you try to figure out a way to rest your leg. And by resting your leg, we're talking about resting it in extension. If you see a doctor, they may even prescribe some sort of an immobilizer for you to keep your leg in extension, meaning keep your knee straight. All right, this will allow the tendon to heal and heal a little bit quicker, and it can also help uh, just with the swelling issue as well, just kind of keeping your leg uh, free of motion and your knee free of motion. So the first step is always going to be to rest it and keep it immobilized. Uh, three to five days is usually recommended. After you've gotten over this period of time, you're then going to start exercising, of course. And the first safest ones are going to be some quadricep exercises, but quadricep exercises where you're not bending and straightening out your knee over and over again. So the, the classic one are, are called quadricep sets or quad sets, and it's an isometric technique that you can use uh, basically on the floor or on your bed. Typically, I tell patients to start by just getting on the floor and having your leg fully straight and just tensing your quad muscle, holding it for a few seconds and releasing and repeating over and over. Once that exercise has been perfected, you might want to sneak a towel just underneath your knee and that just puts the knee in a little bit of flexion now. So now you're challenging the tendon a little bit more, you have the knee in a little bit of flexion and you're still going to try to accomplish the same exercise. And then from there, you might want to move on to a tightening knee exercise and then actual straight leg raise where you're lifting the leg up into the air. Again, maintaining your knee in extension. It's crucial those first few weeks. Um, after about a week or two and you're starting to get over some of the pain and you're able to function a little bit better, it might be a good idea to start cycling. Cycling is a great exercise to start doing at this point because you're getting the range of motion from the pedaling but you're also not doing extreme ranges of motion uh, so it's safer and then of course you're getting your quad and hamstring workout from the bike so the, the first step is definitely rest and specific rest where you're keeping your knee in extension uh, followed by some quad exercises and then followed by some cycling um, it's a tough one it's a tough to uh, recover from there's a lot of scar tissue formation, so you have to be careful with that. And um, you know, it's, pretty, it's a pretty manageable problem though for years to come. It doesn't rear its ugly head you know, down the line like other wear and tear injuries.